Remote start stops for Canon HD SLRs can cost upwards of $150. Today, we're gonna to show you how to build one for under 10 bucks. This is Next Wave TV. This episode is made possible by CPM Film Tools, your lightweight solution for caging the beast. LCD Viewfinder, the essential accessory for DSLR video. Lightcraft Workshop, the perfect tools to create the perfect image. Hey guys, Tony Reale here from NextWaveDV.com. Uh, when using your Canon HDSLR, we all know the large button on the back here, which is for your start stop. Uh, now, using this in normal operation, you're holding the camera, this is a great place for it. But if you're on, say, a shoulder rig or a tripod or somewhere where this button isn't easily accessible, it may be a great option for you to use a remote start stop. Uh, there are remotes that you can buy, which we'll show you in a second, but unfortunately they only work from the front because you have your infrared area on the, the Canon HDSLR, which is right here. And that can only, it can't, if you're behind the camera, the remote's not going to work. It only works from the front because it's primarily designed for you to set your camera up to, to take a picture or take video and then hit it from when you're in the front. Now you can get remote start stops that can attach to your camera and can do exactly what we're going to show you to do, but they cost upwards of $150. So what we're going to show you to do is buy some simple items for under 10 bucks and make one yourself. Now here are the items that we're going to need to get started. Obviously we have our Canon 5D Mark II HDSLR, but this will work on other Canon models also. I'm not sure about Nikon, so you may need to check your owner's manual, see if this is an option for you. What we have over here is the Canon RC6 remote control. This is actually a generic brand of that. You can find this on eBay. Usually the Canon RC6 itself costs around $20, $30, or $40, depending on where you buy it. Um, this, though, you can get for between $5 and $6. So this is a great alternative. It works exactly the same. You push the button halfway down to autofocus and all the rest of the way down to actually take your picture. But when you're in video mode on the camera, this will act as a remote start stop. Right here we have a simple fiber optic cable that you could use for your surround sound system. It's just a basic cable that has um, a clear fiber optic line that runs all the way through it. And obviously it's able to carry light from one source to another. And this is what we're gonna use to transfer the infrared beam from the end of the remote here from behind the camera to in front of the camera. Over here we have a simple wire hanger which we're going to use to add rigidity to the fiber optic cable. Obviously the fiber optic cable is fairly flimsy by itself so this is going to allow us to be able to wrap it around a rig or a tripod or whatever your application is going to be. Um, right here we have just a simple Leatherman which is what I'm going to use to untwist the hanger. And then over here we have some just basic gaff tape. Uh, you can use electrical tape or duct tape, uh, but they're both going to leave a residue. Gaff tape is kind of nice because you, it's much more professional looking, it's a flatter finish, and uh, it doesn't leave a residue, so if you want to use a fiber optic cable again, you're able to do that. Alright, the next step is simply just to go ahead and assemble everything together. The way that I'm going to assemble it is a way that you can still use the fiber optic cable. If you want, you could cut into the fiber optic cable and find a way to make it possibly more compact or do some modifications to the fiber optic cable so that you could have it just more optimized for your camera. But in this instance, I'm gonna show you how to make it and still be able to use the fiber optic cable if you want to later. So first thing we're gonna do is just simply take the wire hanger and untwist it. All right, so we're about halfway there. We've got the cable halfway up our wire hanger. Uh, we do have some extra slack. This is a six foot cable and, and this wire hanger is about three foot long. So we're just gonna loop it around uh, for convenience sake. Um, now the next step is kind of important. We need the infrared remote to be pointing directly at the fiber optic. Now this is where you could, if you wanted to cut the end off or cut the end of the cable and have it be flush with it. I'm just gonna do this so that we can still use the fiber optic cable later. So it just has to be on the end of the hanger, it has to be pointed directly at the end of the fiber optic cable. All right, so now that we have our remote start-stop cable done. Uh, as you can see, we have 
the infrared remote going to the um, fiber optic cable, which will then come out the beam on this end. Very simple, and it is with the, the wire hanger behind it, I can pretty much bend it into any position and it'll be exactly the way that I want it to. The next step is gonna be a setting in the camera to enable the remote start stop from the remote control. All right, so we're gonna enable the menu and then we're gonna go down to your shot settings. Right now, it's, I have it set to continuous shooting. I'm going to scroll over and enable the self timer of 10 seconds, but I don't want 10 seconds, so I'm going to do two seconds. What this does is you see the little remote icon next to it that enables it so that the remote icon will start, and then it'll start after two seconds. All right, now here we have a basic red rock shoulder rig, which would be a great scenario of where you would want to use this if your hands are right here and you don't want to necessarily move your hand to start and stop all the way up to the camera, this is where this could become a great and handy item. So let's go ahead and attach it. First thing we're going to do is attach the remote start stop so that the infrared end of the fiber optic cable is pointing directly at the infrared receiver on the camera. You'll see these two little dots here. This is going to be where the infrared is on the camera. So we need to make sure that this is directly pointing at this. If it's pointing a different direction, then we're going to run into the problem where this is not able to send the signal from the remote. So we've got our remote start stop attached to our rig. Let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to bring my rig up here. Now I'm looking through it. Obviously, I might have my eyepiece on here or whatever, but I have my remote start stop. I'm going to put it into a position that is comfortable. And as you can see, there'll be an indicator light on the front that comes on and we'll hit it again. But a bing, bada boom, I haven't had to move my hands at all. I'm just hitting it with my middle finger right here. And there is your wired remote start stop that you can position anywhere. If you want to put it on the end of your tripod handle, you can do that. Uh, it's pretty much a universal position. It's really great, nice and handy. Obviously, the setup we have here is kind of gaudy. It may not be the most attractive thing, uh, but I, I'm sure if you take a little more time, you can come up with something that is very um, can fit well with the design of your rig, uh, with your setup. And obviously, for 10 bucks, you can make a bunch of them. They're really simple, really easy to use, and this can save you a bunch of time and make it a lot more convenient for you. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Be sure to check out our website, nextwavedv.com, for a lot more tips, lots of HDSLR news, along with other video tips on there. Uh, we have our other series, so be sure to check out our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash nextwavev, and subscribe. And plus, since we're talking about HDSLRs today, I'm going to make another plug for our HDSLR series coming up. It's called HDSLR 101. Uh, we announced it. It was going to be coming towards the end of August. We have a little bit of a pushback uh, because we have a bunch of great sponsors coming on board and going to be sending us some gear to show you guys some new stuff that hasn't even been seen before. So we're really excited about that. So appreciate your patience with that, but be sure to check back. We're going to be launching HDSLR 101 very soon, and we're really excited about that. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Rocky man burning out his fuse out here alone.